Look, it's an income statement. No, wait, it's a balance sheet. No, it's a statement of cash flows. I'm Seth David for the Fundira Ledger, and I'm here to talk to you about the statement of cash flows. It's an often overlooked and misunderstood kind of unsung hero of the financial statements. And the reality is if you look at any company, there are three major financial statements that together really complete the picture. And, and any picture that leaves out one of these statements is really incomplete. And arguably the statement of cash flows from the perspective of let's say an investor or a lender who's trying to establish the creditworthiness of a company, uh, they all have to look at the statement of cash flows ultimately and, and very possibly is the most important one because that's the one that really outlines how financially healthy a company is. The financial health, health of a company is probably, um, well from the standpoint of assessing that, the least important one is probably the income statement. Yes, of course it goes without saying you have to be profitable and make money, but the balance sheet has more information that represents the accumulation of what happened whether or not you made money. And the statement of cash flows reconciles all this. It takes the net income, and we're going to assume we're on an accrual basis here. Even though you file on a cash basis in many cases, you cannot analyze a business on a cash basis. Show your CPA or enrolled agent this video and let them come to me and I'll prove it to them. You may, you may file on a cash basis, but you still need to run your business on an accrual basis. Otherwise, you're leaving out accounts receivable, you're ignoring the money that people owe you, and you're leaving out accounts payable, you're ignoring the money that you owe out that you're obligated to pay out to people. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So you cannot analyze a business on a cash basis, must be a accrual basis. Now, if we look at the statement of cash flows, and again, what it tells us is, is it, it, it reconciles the activity between the income statement or the profit and loss and the balance sheet. It takes that accrual basis net income and analyzes the activity on the balance sheet to reconcile from net income to cash. That's what it's doing. And in the write-up, I gave you a, a very simple outline, which I'm now going to illustrate for you. We're going to use QuickBooks Online as the accounting software, and I'm going to illustrate exactly what I laid up in the outline. Assuming we have a brand new business that started this year, assuming you as the owner contributed $10,000 into that business to get it started, assuming you invoiced $100,000 during the year and had no expenses, I realize that's not realistic, but I want to keep it as simple as possible so I can illustrate how the statement of cash flows works and what it tells us, and I'm going to show you the impact as I record transactions so it becomes really clear what's happening on the statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows can be really tricky because you're going to see these balance sheet accounts on there, and I've had this happen with clients, and I expect it now the first time I review it with one, that you'll look at, for example, accounts receivable has a line item on the statement of cash flows, but you'll look at that and say, that's not what's in my accounts receivable, or why is it negative? And the simple answer to that question is that the statement of cash flows is not telling you what the balance is. That's what the balance sheet's for. It's telling you what the change in that balance has been over whatever period of time we're looking at, usually this year, let's just say, or this year to date. So that's what the statement of cash flows is doing. It's taking the changes in those balance sheet accounts and comparing that with net income to arrive at cash. And you're going to see this very easily illustrated, very clearly illustrated with what I'm about to show you in QuickBooks Online. Let's come over here and take a look. Now, if I go over to reports, uh, you won't find it in recommended. Personally, I think that's a mistake. I think it should be in recommended. If it was up to me, I would put it here in recommended. It would be the first one because I really think as small business owners, you all need to get much more in tune with the statement of cash flows and what it actually tells you about that business. And that's what I'm hoping you'll take away from this video is that you know new or, or better understanding of what the statement of cash flows is, what it's all about, and why you should be looking at it probably more often than you do. So now let's go over to all reports and I'm gonna back up to all reports. So all reports, we're gonna go to business overview and then tucked away in the corner here is your statement of cash flows. Now when I click on that, you're going to see that, as I mentioned in the outline, we're starting off with the assumption that we have a brand new business that we just invested or we just financed the business with $10,000 of our own money. So what does the statement of cash flows tell me? It tells me that I had $10,000 in positive cash flow, but it didn't come from operations and it didn't come from income that I earned from clients minus expenses that I paid. It came from financing activities. It came from right here, the shareholder capital contribution. Let's widen up the column so we can see the whole account. And I just put myself in there as the shareholder contributing $10,000. That's where all my cash flows came from so far. Now let's go over to customers. And I'll just pick on some customer. And we'll say new invoice. And the details are not important, right? Let's just say this happened on June 30th, 2016. And we'll just pick some service item. We'll call it a design fee. 
and we'll say 75,000. Okay, then we're going to say save and new. And again, we'll invoice some customer. This time, we'll invoice them today, December 28th, 2016, for another design fee, $25,000. That's our whole $100,000. I'm going to say save and close. Now, let's take a look at what this does on my statement of cash flows. When I click run report to refresh it, now we're getting somewhere. So look what happens. It says I've got $100,000 in net income, but I haven't received any money yet. It's all in accounts receivable. Let's duplicate this tab and run the balance sheet so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This again is looking at the change in accounts receivable. Right now, the entire change is the entire amount because we didn't receive any money. So if I go back to reports and here in the recommended, I can find my balance sheet. And my balance sheet right now says accounts receivable because it's last month. So let's run this for all dates. And so now it says accounts receivable $100,000. Now let's get, some, let's get paid. Okay. So right now, again, everything balances. I have net income of $100,000, but I haven't been paid any of it. So it all has to be reversed out to arrive at cash. And so still I'm just left cash-wise with the $10,000 that I invested. Let's go receive a payment. So some customer is going to pay us the older of the two invoices. $75,000. QuickBooks is smart enough to figure out that must go with this invoice. And we'll just deposit it right into the bank account. Save and close. Now let's see what we've got. Now this is where we're going to get the answer to our question. How much money is in the bank based on the scenario laid out in the write-up, which hopefully you've read or at least skimmed, should be 85000 If I run my report, now look what happens. Sure enough, I was right, $85,000. Now let's analyze where that came from. We have operating activities that started with net income of $100,000, but we only received 75000 of it. So the net change to accounts receivable, remember we started at zero. That's why I wanted to do it this way because it's really easy to analyze the numbers. We started at zero. We ended up, if I go back to my balance sheet, with $25,000 because in between I received seventy five. dollars of that hundred thousand. So the net change to accounts receivable was add a hundred thousand, subtract seventy five thousand. The net change to accounts receivable was an increase of twenty five thousand dollars. That means that my net income figure here includes twenty five thousand dollars I have not yet received, so I have to subtract it out to arrive at cash. So our operating activities show net cash flows of seventy five thousand dollars, the one payment that I got. And you take that plus the ten thousand I contributed, and that's how we wind up with $85,000. My friends, I wanted to keep this simple. Of course, we'll do more of this, especially if you comment on it and tell me you love this and want more. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Reach out to me, I'm very accessible and available. As soon as you post comments, I'll be notified and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with any questions or any answers to any questions that you might have. As always, I hope you had some fun and learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.